Hey everyone, welcome to another um, Edge video. Today, Mark and I thought we'd maybe actually chat to you about something that not every property owner is actually aware of. It's something that we always bring to the fore in our letter of advice, but it doesn't often filter down to the homeowners. And that is leaving your property so that it is unoccupied or vacant. And uh, did you know that it actually increases the risk for the insurer? So we wanted to have a bit of a, a chat with you in regards to this and why it's such a big risk. Um, so what we're going to do is have more of a discussion around it and tell you why it's more risky, maybe share some stories, some war stories with you, and just so that you can keep this four, top four of your mind. Yeah, no, thanks, Candice. Um and guys, it's it's an interesting topic um, and more topical these days. We've actually seen a few instances. What we've found lately is um, a couple of owners have been uh, had been affected by this factor. They've been overseas or they've been away and they've come back and they've found that the claims or the ability to claim has been prejudiced by the fact that they've been unoccupied for such a long period of time. And rightly so, um, uh, Candice, um, I think we're going to put this up on the screen. There's a few things. The, the risks certainly increase. So from an insurance point of view, they need to put something in the policy to you know, be fair. Um, because you can't just expect the insurance company to carry all of the risks when the risks are actually much higher when the place is unoccupied. The risk of theft, for example, is much higher. Um particularly malicious damage, uh, somebody breaking in and actually maybe living there. I've got some stories to maybe tell or share. Um, and then water damage. If some if there's some water just leaking and running all the time, nobody's checking in and, you know, like you would come home from work and find some flood. It's going to do that for six months, perhaps. Um, and then, of course, the risk of fire and storm damage. You're unaware of the fact that the roof leaked uh, and... Every time it rains now, you, you, you've got uh, damages and you're unaware of it. So the risk of further damage is much higher in the in the event of an occupancy. Yeah. Candice, I know you've done a little bit of homework here for us. Um, you've scratched around and looked at three policy wordings. Um, mm. You know, and, and they're all, they're, they're all a slight little, slightly different. We won't mention them, but just give some examples of how the insurance companies deal with this. Yeah, no, definitely, Mark, because if you think about it, um, if you've left your your unit unoccupied, you open yourself up to, to things that normally might not have been as bad as when it is now discovered months later. So your insurer actually has a higher, or is prejudiced. They, they, they don't have the opportunity to have had a smaller claim. Now they're sitting with quite a larger claim. So what happens is the insurance companies are going to respond and they are going to put in extra conditions that if your property is left vacant. And a lot of them are going to start to increase the excesses normally within that um, golden 30 days. And then after that time, you might find yourself almost even co-insured. So um, we just looked at sort of the top three major insurers for South Africa. And the one, for example, is going to hold you personally responsible for at least 20% of any theft or damage claims that happens to your property for up to 60 days. And then after that, their cover will actually stop. The second one is going to suspend their cover for theft or malicious damage after 30 days, unless you've told them in writing. So we are calling on diligent owners here to actually report through your managing agents or your trustees to say that my unit is going to be vacant. It's always better to divulge upfront rather than try and retract your steps later. The third insurer, also pretty similar, they're going to charge you extra. They have a tiered excess structure anything after 30 days until eventually the cover is going to stop. So we've got to keep that sort of top of mind and maybe call on managing agents as well. Every now and again, just drop it in your newsletter. Uh, did you know if your unit is vacant for more than 30 days, you actually need to notify us. So it's rather better to put it out there than to have to sit with an issue where you've got a claim and now there's a rejection because nobody knew that this unit was going to be vacant. No, absolutely. Um, and, you know, that's 
kind of why we're doing these videos is to actually uh, we can't expect every owner to be reading our record of advice that we provide every year and so how better you know let's you know that's why we do these videos so i think thanks thanks candace for doing that bit of extra input there um what i what i'm keen on though is to understand not only the first 30 days in some cases the 60 days but what worries me is actually the complete cancellation of cover after a certain period um yeah that's that's quite scary i don't think anybody even myself don't really think that look i'm going away for six weeks two weeks of those uh six weeks i'm going to have no cover whatsoever um yeah. because uh, and had i simply written you a letter as a client to say or an email to say listen i'm going to be away for six weeks is the insurance company okay with it and then you get the okay and then you're safe um yeah simple as that really isn't it it is um it's almost a case of you've given the insurer the opportunity to provide you with comment before you actually leave your unit vacant and tell you these are the conditions and then you can actually ascertain for yourself what well, can i meet the conditions so if i have to have someone calling on my unit regularly can i arrange that and it's all about just it's a protecting your asset at the end of the day um and just being proactive and and understanding that things happen and rather let it be known to the insurer up front then come back and now you're going to fight a losing battle no absolutely yeah so i think the big message is you know awareness and just be aware that actually there are restrictions on the policy if you go away for longer i think the golden as you say the period is uh 30 days after 30 mm -hmm. days if you're going away for longer than 30 days, let the insurance company know or buy us okay, if, if you can. Um, and, um, yeah, luckily, we haven't had too many problems on this issue, but um, yeah. we, ha we have had some interesting cases lately. Um, Candice, do you want to just allude to, like, after a big storm, what has happened? Um, yeah, um, definitely. Like, up in Kating, for example, we had huge storms towards the end of last year. And I mean, we're eight months into the new year. And in some cases, units have been vacant since before the storm. And now we've had a change of maybe an agent or anything like that. And now the owner's been made aware that actually they, they're sitting with a collapsed ceiling. They've got laminated floor damage, um, extensive water damage, which seems to be from those huge storms in November up in Gauteng. And now you're going to go hat in hand to the insurer and you're going to ask, well, can I please still have cover? But in these cases that have come to light, the insurer wouldn't have known that that unit was vacant. And now we, we're sitting with the challenge of, is there going to be cover? Is there going to be part cover? Mm -hmm. How are the insurers going to handle this? And it's actually two different insurers in, in both of these cases that have come to light. So it'll be interesting to see what and transpires. Yeah, well, it's not an interesting, so interesting until it's after the fact. Because meanwhile, we actually have to stress about this. So there we yes. go. Yeah, yeah. Another, a couple of other little stories that I can think about. I remember a few years ago, quite a few years ago, in Cape Town, there was a complex, actually an apartment block, where garages, you know, often the garages are at the bottom and they face the road. And uh, in Cape Town, we, you know, in Cape Town, we call these people berges or burgies, but uh, up here we call them, in Gauteng, we tend to call them vagrants. Um, anyway, the vagrants uh, sneaked at night. They're very clever. They don't have to worry. I think these guys have got, there should be a degree in getting sneakiness because these guys are clever. And they managed to get into this garage at night when nobody was really watching them and um, made the lock look like it was closed and in they went. And they were making, keep to keep warm, they were making fires inside this garage. And, of course, the whole garage caught fire. So that was one instance. Um, yeah, so even, even if you are living there, but your garage downstairs is unoccupied, that's, that's also mm. unoccupied. Uh, uh, so you've got to be careful and so secure your places. And yeah. then there was one now recently, uh, which my colleague Bruce was alluding to today, was where 
It wasn't a vagrant even. It was somebody. It was a neighbor. Can you believe this? A neighbor, and I'm not going to say too much because it's still fresh, uh, something along the lines that the neighbor saw that the neighbor was away for a long period of time, broke in and was staying there, and renting out their place. Oh, my goodness. And then there was a fire, and this is how this whole thing erupted. So, yeah, you've <laughs> there's some real funny stories. I think I'll leave it at that. Let's, Candice, I think let's, <laughs> oh, let's not go into all the war stories. Maybe you can just, <laughs> let's just wrap up. And, and, you know, what can one really do, you know, besides telling us, but what can you do? Mm. What are the preventative measures? I think there's just a couple. Um, I think it's just a couple that we can sort of mention. Um, obviously, the, the the main thing is we want to try and avoid any kind of electrical issue or any kind of water damage. So shut off your water supply. Um, switch off any non-essential electricity. Um, you want to make sure that the doors and the windows are, are nicely secured. And ask someone to check on your property and do it regularly. And, and one thing that I think is important is arrange that there's some way that you can report that you've actually had this person go to your unit. Maybe date stamp the photos or on that day, WhatsApp, this is what your unit looks like. I'm visiting it now. So that you've got some kind of record. Should something happen, you can say, but last week, Friday, this is what it looked like. So yes, I am away, but I made provision to inspect my property regularly. And you also... On a, on a security aspect, so that you avoid that story that you may be talking about, Mark, is make your property appear like someone is there. Maybe get some timers or some lamps around your house or a timer for the TV to go on or, or something like that. A lot of these things now you can actually do using your phone, using Bluetooth. You can automate your house if need be. Um, and then the other thing is, you know, it's, it's not really so much a case of post anymore, but you get a lot of junk mail that can sometimes depending on obviously what your complex arrangement is but you want to try and clear out your mailbox wherever that goes try and arrange with the neighbor that that gets cleared regularly so that it looks like there is someone there you want to try and avoid the vandalism that could come or the security or the theft the break-in that kind of aspect where you you can have damages um, to your section no absolutely no, Candice, I think that's about it. Um, I think it's an awareness thing. Um, you agree? Yeah. There's nothing else you need to add there, do you? You think that's about it? I, I think it's about it. Um, it's just about making this sort of top of mind and maybe mm. the managing agents can share this out with the owners because it's not something that stays top of mind. Your mm. focus is your holiday and you know, you're know you looking for a lock up and go and, and that's where you think that it stops. But Hopefully this video is helpful and um, it helps people to to know that there's other levels to having to protect your your unit when you go away. And we just want to also help our owners navigate insurance like a pro. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so carry on watching our YouTube channel for more tips. <laughs> no, absolutely. And on that very point, don't forget to like this video, uh, share it and subscribe if you uh want to watch some more of these things so that you're notified um, when we come up with other issues that we think everybody should know about. Okay, thanks very much. Cheers. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye, Ernest. <laughs>